the next thing we're going to need to do is add some code. So let's do that next. All right, down here in the Assets panel, I'm going to go ahead and start creating some scripts and create three or four of them all together. I'm going to right click and create a C sharp script. Now this first one I'll call Slingshot. It's going to be kind of the basic script attached to the slingshot. What I'd like it to do is, whenever I hover over the slingshot, I'd like to be able to see the halo effect. Whenever I'm not hovered, I don't want to see it. Then if I press the mouse down, I want to spawn a ball. And as long as the mouse is held down, the ball moves along with the mouse. And when I let go, the ball fires. All right, so it's going to apply some velocity and send it off through the air. So I'll double click on Slingshot. We're going to go ahead and open up Microsoft Visual Studio. Make this code a little bit better so it's bigger, so it's easier to read. Alright, so we've got lots of things to add. Um, first, some variables. I need to keep track of the launcher. I'll make that a public game object. Public game object launcher and I'll assign it by dragging it into the correct position in Unity. I need some more variables. These will be set internally so I'll make them private. A boolean variable named is aiming. That'll keep track if I'm getting ready to fire a ball. Um, for convenience I'm going to calculate the radius of the sphere which is going to be used to limit how far I can drag the ball. And slingshots have limits. Next, I need a public variable, a game object variable. I'll call this prefab ball. It's going to be the object which is cloned and fired by the spring shot. Then I'm going to have a, another public object. I'll call this one active ball. And this is going to keep track of the ball that was most recently fired. And the reason I'm making this public, even though the value will be set, by this class, the slingshot class, I'm going to need this variable to be accessed by other scripts later on. So that's why this one is going to stay public. And then here's a setting I want to make public so the programmer or designer can tweak it if need be. It's going to be the speed multiplier. You can make your ball go faster or slower after you fire it. And this is my set of variables for now. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is when the program starts, all the start code is used to initialize objects. Launcher.setActive, I'm going to set that to false. That'll make sure that I can't see the halo at the beginning. Um, is aiming when I start the game, should also be false. Uh, I want to set the radius of the sphere. And this is just for convenience. Because I don't want to have to type this particular line of code again and again. This dot get component sphere collider that we added initially. And get its radius. See when we start, there is no active ball, so we'll set that to be null. Alright. Next I'd like some code which is going to turn on and off that halo effect. In order to get that code to work I need to write the following method. It's automatically called in Unity. Provided everything is spelled and capitalized correctly, the method is called onMouseEnter. So whenever the mouse is hovering, this code will activate. So when the mouse hovers, over that sphere collider, the launcher will become active and I'll be able to see that glow effect. Similarly, I need to be able to turn it off. So on mouse exit. So this is when I stop hovering, when my mouse leaves that region. Launcher, set active to false. And that'll turn on and off the halo. In fact, at this point, I have something I can test. I'm going to go ahead and save this project, save that script, go back to Unity. 
Uh, the slingshot script needs to be attached somewhere, so naturally I'm going to attach it to the slingshot. Let's see, the slingshot needs to be made aware of these different objects. So for instance, I'm going to click and drag launcher, this launcher area, and the prefab ball, drag the prefab from my assets panel. Active ball, again, that'll be set later on by the code. But now, if I save and give this a try, if I take my mouse and hover it over that spherical area, I'll get a neat glowing effect. So when I enter, it glows. When I exit that region, it no longer glows. Visual feedback is important for your players. All right, let's go back to code. Going back to Visual Studio now. Now we have some code for the update method. Actually, no, before we do the update method, um, there's different ways you can arrange your code. You can take advantage of all these different mouse events, such as on mouse enter or exit. There's another method called on mouse down. So, this method will activate if I click a mouse button while hovered over that slingshot area. So, when I press a mouse button, I want to spawn a ball, and then I want it to be kind of locked to the position of the mouse. First I'll set is aiming equals true. We'll see where that gets used later on. Active ball. I'm going to use the instantiate method. Instantiate the prefab ball as a game object. And I need to set some things. So for instance, active ball dot transform dot position. Now where does the active ball start out? It starts out at the launcher, the launcher dot transform dot position. Also, I kind of need to turn off gravity on the ball. When I create it, I don't want it to fall right away. So I'm going to make it a kinematic object. So active ball. So gravity is controlled by the rigid body attached to the object. So I need to get the component of type rigid body. And then the is kinematic setting. I'll set that to be true. I think of it informally as being frozen. All right. So when you press the mouse key, or mouse key, the mouse button, these lines of code will activate. And now update, this is called continuously. So what should the slingshot do every frame? Well, first, if it's not in the aiming state, if not is aiming, shouldn't do anything. So if we're not aiming, just go ahead and return. Exit this method. Otherwise, we're going to update the position of the ball according to where the mouse is currently being held. So we're going to create some local variables here. A uh, vector 3 called mouse position screen, which as the name indicates, stores the position of the mouse on the screen. That can be retrieved from the input class. And next I need to adjust the Z coordinate. Mouse position screen, Z, that's going to be the main camera actually negative camera dot main transform position Z. Don't forget that negative sign. All right, next, I need to take my screen coordinates and I need to convert them to in-game world coordinates. So I need to find out mouse position world and store that as another vector 3. So that'll be camera dot main dot screen to world point of mouse position screen. All right, so this takes whatever the screen position is and figures out where the mouse would be in the world. And the camera has the ability to run this method. All right, I also need to keep track of how far I'm dragging the mouse from its base position. To calculate that, 
and store it in a new vector 3 called drag vector. I take the current position, the mouse position world, and I subtract the center, which is where it was spawned from. So launcher dot transform dot position. So figure out how far it's currently being dragged. Now remember I want to bound it to that sphere region. So I'm going to check and if the drag vector is too far, if the user is trying to drag it too far away, I'll just change the size of the drag vector so it's at most the radius of the sphere. So if the drag vector size or magnitude is too large, if it's greater than the sphere radius that we calculated and set right at the beginning, then what we need to do is I'll change it so its size is equal to the sphere radius. And this is kind of a two-step process. First we take the drag vector and we normalize it. That gives it a length of 1. And then if I multiply it by the sphere radius, that in effect scales it to the correct size. So drag vector multiply itself by the sphere radius. This will make sure the ball isn't moving too far. And so once this potential change is made, I'll take that into consideration when I set the current position of the active ball. So active ball dot transform dot position will be equal to the initial position, launcher dot transform dot position plus the drag vector. All right. Now, the last thing we need to do is when you release the mouse button, the ball fires off into the air. And your first inclination might be, well, remember earlier we had a method on mouse down, and that's when you press a mouse button down. Why don't we write a method called on mouse up? And that would be great except for one possible problem. What if the user releases the mouse button while the mouse is not hovered over the slingshot, and such a method would not be fired. So in order to properly detect a mouse release, including when it's not hovering over this object, we need to continually check for it in the update method. All right, so I'm going to write an if statement here. You know, the slingshot is always going to check to see if the mouse button was released even if the mouse isn't currently hovering over it. So if input dot get mouse button up, um, I'm looking for mouse button zero. That's just the left mouse button. In that case, there's some things to do. Um, first is aiming becomes false because we're no longer aiming. And then, well, two things I need to do to the ball. I need to turn gravity back on I need to unfreeze it, it's no longer kinematic, and I need to set the velocity. Both of those things are controlled by the rigid body, so since I need it twice, I'll actually create a variable, rigid body RB, is equal to active ball. Now get the component, get the rigid body attached to it, and then I'll set those two properties. So RB.isKinematic is now false, gravity may work. And rb dot velocity velocity is equal to well the drag vector first a negative drag vector because we're dragging not away right it is kind of like we're pulling back the elastic on the slingshot so we're going backwards towards and through the center and into our scene so negative drag vector but also I might want it to go a little bit faster than just the length of the drag vector. So that's why we have that speed multiplier variable. You can change the speed by changing the value of that. All right, this sounds pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Go back to Unity and test it out. Got my slingshot. All these objects are attached. I'll hit play. And so if I hover and now I'm going to click and a ball appears. I notice that I have the ball here. 
It's a little bit obscured by the halo, so I might make the halo a little bit smaller. But I can drag it back. Notice wherever my mouse is, I can't drag past the cylinder. And when I let it go, it fires into my tower. Excellent. All right, I'm going to go back into my code. I'm in the launcher. I'm going to make the halo a little bit smaller, maybe size 1. And so it'll be easier to see the ball. All right, very good. Now there's a couple other things we might want to do to this code. Um, one of the things is once you play this game for a while, like I might fire the ball, and then the ball might go off the screen and I can't see it anymore, and I don't know what's happening. But I want to know what's happening. So we're going to write another script which is going to cause the main camera to follow the ball. Really it could be used to follow any target, but we need to write a script to readjust the position of the camera so it kind of tracks the active ball. So let's go back down to the assets area, right click and we're going to create another C-sharp script. This one I'll name follow target. And this one is going to be attached to the main camera eventually. Right, so to follow the target, see first we need some variables. For instance, um, we're attaching it to the main camera. So I'll say public game object. Let's see, if this is going to follow something, I need to keep track of what it is I'm following. So keep track of the target object. What else do I need to keep track of? Um, I'm going to keep track of the initial camera position because once I'm done following a ball and once it stops moving, I want to move back to the original shot, the original spot. So I'll also track that. It'll be set internally, so I'll make it a vector 3. Call it initial position. Also, when I'm playing the game, I always want to keep the ground in view. So I want to keep track of the position of the ground. So the way I'll do this is two steps. First I'll create a public game object called ground. And so it'll be easy to assign by clicking and dragging in Unity. And then I'll figure out its position and store that in a vector 3 for convenience. So vector 3 called ground position. Um, finally, when I'm moving the camera around the scene, I don't want it to go too fast. Right? I want the camera to not instantaneously jump to its target, but always kind of move towards the target slowly, kind of ease in on it. In fact, such a thing is called easing. So I'm going to create a variable called easing. I'll set it up to 0 0.05. So what this value will mean eventually is that during every frame, every tick, that's going to move 5% closer to its target. And since hopefully the game is running at 60 frames per second, it will quickly catch up to whatever object it should be tracking. Alright, set up some objects here. Okay. First thing I want to do in the start method is initialize my vectors. So initial position is going to be, well, whatever, wherever this starts. This dot transform dot position. In addition, I need to set ground position. It's going to be very similar. I take the ground object, which I'll set later, and take its transform position. Alright, that sets up some variables. Next, I need to go ahead and set up my update, and this is going to track something, track something for me. Right, first, I'm going to create a local variable, uh, vector3 called target position. All right, so this is kind of where I want to go. And it could be one of two places. Uh, my target position might be a ball if there's a ball moving across the screen, or it might be just the home position if nothing has been fired and nothing's moving, and I'm just preparing to launch another ball. So how will I determine what the target position is? I'm going to do an if statement here. First I want to see, is there a target object? If target object is not still equal to null, 
and it's another condition as well the target object's component is still moving. So get component rigid body. So getting the rigid body attached to the target object and take a look at its velocity. So dot velocity. And then, well, the speed is what I'm really interested in. So the magnitude of the velocity vector. And I'm going to check if that's really small. Now, there's another way to do this in Unity. Um, what I could do is I could check to see if it's sleeping. There's a method called is sleeping. That means it's not moving at all. However, if you're just moving you know, thousandths of a unit, that would still count as moving, even though you might not be able to visually see it on the screen. So I prefer to check if I have a moving target by checking to see if the magnitude is just very small. All right. So, let's see. Right now, if I have a target object, but it's hardly moving at all, I kind of want to turn that off. I want to set my target object to be null. So set target set target object to be null in this case. Right, this will stop us from following something which isn't moving, because that's not exciting. All right, now I can set target position based on what the target object is. So, if target object is equal to null, then my target position is going to be my start position, my initial position. Otherwise, my target position is going to be wherever the target object is located. So target object dot transform dot position. All right, so that's where I want to go. But remember, I don't want to just jump to that position. I want to move towards that position. So I'm going to introduce a new variable, a vector three called follow position. And so to kind of move towards the target position, I'm going to interpolate. The vector three class has a method called lerp stands for linear interpolation. Just going to find a point between the current position of this object, the camera to which this is attached. So this dot transform dot position. It's going to interpolate between that and target position. Then we have to say, well, how much do you want to interpolate by? That's why we set up that variable called easing before. And so this will figure out the intermediate position to which we actually do want to move the camera. I do want to put a couple of limitations on the following position, though. For instance, um, if you shoot the ball off to the left, I'm not interested in that. Um, and I also don't want the camera to go so far down that I'm seeing below the ground. So I'm going to limit the x and the y positions of the camera. So the way I'm going to do that is well, I'm going to check follow position. I'm going to check the x value. I never want the camera to be to the left of the starting position. So if for some reason follow position x is less than initial position dot x, well to bound it, I'm going to set it equal to initial position dot x. Right, so it'll never go below it. It's kind of like clamping it to that value. All right, I want to do exactly the same thing for y. So go ahead and copy this code, this line right here, copy and paste. I'm going to change each one of the x's to a y. And this will make sure x and y don't go too far away. Also, I never want the z position of the camera to change from what I initially set it to. So actually, this isn't even an if statement. This isn't always. So follow position dot z should always be equal to the initial position dot z. And so now, now that I've calculated my position, I can now use it. This dot transform position should be the calculated follow position. Right, that looks pretty good. 
There's one more thing I'd like to do though. Uh, if the ball goes too high in the sky, I'd like to zoom the camera out. And so the way I do that is by changing the orthographic size of the camera. Remember that gives you half the height of the camera. So this, I'm going to get component, and I get the camera attached to this object. Then I'm going to set the orthographic size. Well, remember, I'd like to always have both the camera centered in the screen, and I'd like it to be the orthographic size to include both the center of the camera and the position of the ground. So I can achieve that by saying follow position dot y minus ground position dot y. And so we'll see a zoom out effect if the ball goes very high in the air. So let's say um, zoom camera to include ground. All right, that sounds pretty good. One more minor change I need to make. In the update method, update is called once per frame. However, a physics simulation doesn't run at the same rate that the graphics are being rendered. Fixed update is the way we can change and keep these things in sync. I'm going to change this method to a new method called fixed update. Fixed update is called in sync with the physics simulation. It's important enough that I'm writing out a comment. So I'm going to change the name of this method to fixed update. It's automatically called just like the update method, but it's called at the same rate as the physics simulation. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I need to go ahead and attach the follow target script to the main camera. Right, target object. It's not set yet. That'll be set later on. That'll actually be set by the slingshot class. That's why we need to make it public. Um, also ground. I need to tell the script what is the ground. This is the ground. Click and drag ground over here. Alright. That sounds pretty good. Okay, let's go back to the follow target script. Let's slide over to the slingshot script. Alright, so as soon as I let go of the mouse button, which happens right in here, I want to activate the follow target script. The way I do that is by setting active ball to be whatever was just spawned here. Right, follow target, remember this has a public variable called target object. I'm going to set that from inside the slingshot class. So if input get mouse button is up, so I'm at the very bottom within this last conditional statement in the slingshot class. All right, first, slingshot has to find the main camera. There's lots of ways you can do this. You can declare a public variable and click and drag to assign it. Um, I'll just show you a different way to do it here. They both work. Uh, game object cam equals the game object class has a method called find and it'll look for an object by name. So I want it to look for the object called main camera. Store that in the variable cam and then cam, I'm going to go ahead and get component I'd like to access the script which is attached to the camera. And so the script class was called follow target. So this kind of gives us access to the script. And then I'm going to set its target object. I can do that because it's public. I'll set that to be active ball. And so now these two scripts are talking to each other. The target object will be an active ball. As long as it's moving, the camera will follow it. And then, again, once the target object stops moving, once it's the magnitude of its velocity, once its speed slows down, it will stop following it, and it will go back to the initial position. At least this is the goal. Let's save it and give it a try. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and play. Right, so I'm going to fire a ball. 
and it slows down. I didn't fire it enough to see follow cam in action, so let's do that. Totally did not work. Alright, I think I just didn't save it, so make sure everything is saved here. Save the slingshot code, save the follow target code. If you go back to Unity, you can make sure that the code is up to date. There's no errors in the code. You can click these things and then look in the inspector panel and make sure all your code is right. In particular, Slingshot, make sure that you have these new two lines of code down in the Slingshot class. If these aren't appearing down here, make sure you're saving. So I think I've saved now, and now everything should work all right. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's fire a ball high into the air. Oh, there it goes. And the camera's following it. If I fling it far away, there it goes. Bounces, it rolls a little bit, it stopped rolling, and we'll go back. What if I fire high in the air? Notice how the camera zooms out and zooms in. Hey, that's looking pretty good.